Welcome again everybody to a new uh, session and in this session we are going to have a look uh, on the uh, impact, uh, the relationship of the apex of a third molar to the inferior dental canal. Uh, you know from a surgical point of view the uh, close relationship of uh, the apex of, an, uh, of a tooth whether it is impacted or partially erupted to the inferior dental canal might carry uh, surgical risks post-operative or intraoperative risks so it's better be decided beforehand uh, and radiographically uh, uh, seen to verify the uh, relationship so that the uh, necessary precautions uh, to be taken. Now in this OPG for the patient we will have a look on the 4-8 the lower right third molar which is uh, which has a mesial angular uh, actually it's partially erupted uh, and it is mesial angularly directed so there is no chance of eruption as you can see in here so it's better be taken especially if the patient started to complain anyways in the radiograph I want you to concentrate on this OPG on the apex of this tooth now the apex of this tooth, you ca uh, if, we, if we follow the course of the inferior dental canal over here, we see that when it reaches close to the apex, there is a change in the course of the canal. It, 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 it is kind of pushed by the apex of the tooth in an apical direction in this area. Okay. Com compare it to this side, uh, side for instance you see that the course of the canal is uh, 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 did not change as you can see from uh, 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 this side but if you if you see it on this side the uh, the, uh, uh, the the direction of the canal has been changed which means that there is a relationship or a close relationship between uh, the uh, tooth to the apical uh, to the uh, of the apex of the tooth to the uh, inferior dental canal. Unfortunately, in the 2D, you cannot know exactly where the direction of the canal is passing, and uh, uh, the uh, 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 how how is precisely the relationship between the canal and the uh, and the uh, tooth so in this case the 3D will help us uh, in, in, in verifying the proper uh, or the exact relationship the, uh, the CBCT for this patient for the same patient uh, usually it starts from here so what you do I want you to have a look on the uh, panoramic view. The panoramic view on the CBCT here can, has no superimposition, so it's a 0.3 millimeter uh, slice thickness of the patient. If you compare it to the uh, normal, see the amount of the <coughs> superimposed structures. If you compare it here, you see that the there is minimal superimposition. In this radiograph, you will see that the the radiograph over here, uh, the inferior dental canal over here is is not as sharp. Uh, the the change in the direction is not as sharp it as it is in the OPG. So what we will do here, <coughs> we want to verify. However, before I go to the verification, I want you to concentrate on this area. You will see that the apex of the tooth is exactly over the canal this is the course of the canal and this is the uh, apex of the tooth so uh, if we want to verify again what we will do is that we will try to uh, uh, bring the uh, slicing window exactly on the apical or on the apex of the 
uh, on the tooth, as you can see in here. And now let's start our interpretation. First of all, we will go to the sagittal plane, and in the sagittal plane, we will try to go medially and laterally so that we can locate the inferior dental canal. And this is the inferior dental canal over here. This is the inferior dental canal over here. Okay? This is the course of the canal. See how clear it is in this view. Now, I will. Now we are in the canal. Let us go to the coronal part. In the coronal part, I will try to move anteriorly and posteriorly so that I will uh, uh, I will uh, the locate the canal. Before I do this, I want you to have a look at, at the uh, this radiolucency which surrounds the crown of the tooth. This is the follicular space of the uh, uh, which surrounds the uh, 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 uninterrupted crown. See it over here in the uh, sagittal view. How big it is? We can measure it. It is around 10 millimeters. Okay, uh, and its largest view, while in its l the largest view in the coronal part is around buccolingually is around five millimeters okay so if we go back to the coronal see uh, and to the normal OPG you don't see this area you will see however a radiolucency over here but the good thing about the OPG it, it, it gives you uh, there is no superimposition of structures so you will be able to view uh, hidden uh, uh, pathologies or structures that are otherwise masked by the 2D uh, view. Okay. Now, what we want to locate here in the coronal view is we want to see the course of the canal. So what we will do is that we will go posteriorly starting from the, this is the mandibular foramen in the mandible. Okay. This is the mandibular foramen in the mandible over here, and I will to, I will move anteriorly. So this is the canal. I'm moving. Can you see the canal over here? Now the canal has gone in a lingual direction, which is unlikely. Uh, usually the inferior dental canal goes buccal to the teeth. Now we are reaching the apex of the tooth, and this is the apex of the tooth over here. This is the canal, by the way, and this is the apex of the tooth. You see that the canal is very close to the apex. This is the canal, and this is the apex of the tooth. I'll go back. The canal, and this is the apex of the tooth, started to show over here. The, the canal is passing in a lingual direction to the... Uh, Uh, root uh, exactly it is passing to the uh, lingual to the distal root of the uh, partially uh, uh, impacted tooth now this is the canal I'm going I'm moving anteriorly the canal started to pass below it started to show here this is the canal so what is what is happening is that the canal is passing below and very close to the apex of the distal root it goes in a, a lingual direction and then it passes just underneath the uh, mesial root. So and we are, this is the canal over here. I'll bring it here. This is the canal. Okay. So this is an interesting case. The canal actually, the inferior dental canal is passing close to the distal root over here and the coronal view has showed us that it is also passing very close it passes lingual to the distal root it passes below the uh, root lingual and apical and then it passes apical to the mesial root so it is in a close relationship to both roots and then it continues anteriorly this is the canal 
this is the canal over here and then it passes how this is the canal and then it goes in an anterior direction moving forward okay now we started to go into the seven uh, lower seven okay so this is an interesting case uh, where it shows the uh, uh, the a close relationship of an inferior dental canal that is passing lingual and apical to the distal root of the lower eight and then it passes uh, apical to the mesial root of the uh, uh, same tooth and then it uh, continues forward uh, in the uh, in the 3d reconstruction this is not uh, very very clear as it is in the other views so we will skip this and I just want you uh, to see before we finish the uh, unfortunately in the axial view the course of the canal is not very clear this is the canal over here if you have dental canal compare it to the other side and then it passes to as you can see the tooth will overlay or mask the canal so you don't see it anymore until it passes over here below the tooth so the best view where you can see in the 3d I mean is that you will go to the uh, coronal and to the sagittal views where you will have a better understanding of the cause of the canal thank you very much